Hello, I'm Mr. Howard, and in this video we're going to go through the basics of arrays. And we'll go through some notes here first, just some facts about arrays, and then we'll actually work with some code. So arrays are data structures, and that's usually the first arrays or the first data structure that you're introduced to in an uh, introduction to Java uh, course. And all that means is it's just a structure for us to store data. Arrays, when we create them, they're created as objects, and you'll notice that we'll use the new keyword whenever we instantiate our array, just like we have done with objects in the past. Arrays hold a specific type of data, so this is important. We can hold only one type of data in an array, so if we create an integer array, we'll hold integers in it. If we create a double array, we'll hold doubles. We can create an array to hold strings or chars or even objects. But we can only hold one type of data in that set as soon as we declare our array in the beginning. So once we set that, it can only hold one type of data. Arrays are fixed in size, so as soon as we create our array, it has a certain length, it has a certain number of elements that it will hold, and that is fixed. Once we make that decision in the beginning, we cannot add elements to it, we cannot add positions for it, I should say. We cannot change its length, the total amount of values that can be stored in the array. It's fixed at that point. We can't take away, we can't add. We can change the elements in the array, but we cannot change its size. So arrays are zero indexed, and the good news is there that you're used to things being zero indexed because we've worked with strings, and strings are zero indexed, so that prior learning will help you when we're working here with arrays. Each value in the array is called an element, that's important vocabulary, and we have, just like when we create an object, there's two steps to create an array. And first we declare a reference to the array, and then we instantiate the array. So we'll do both of those things here in just a moment. So I'm going to move over to our IDE, and then we'll start writing some code. Okay, so here we are in our IDE, so we're going to make a new Java file here, and we'll say public class array video. And we'll put a main method in here, and that way we can print some stuff out here in a minute. So put that main method in. and get that set up okay so now that we've done that I'm going to go ahead and save the file and then we'll go from there okay I've got that saved so now we can actually create our first array so when we do that we need to say what type it is so integer array a, so we're giving it the name A, is equal to new integer array with, we'll put four total elements in this. We can store four elements inside this array, so it has a length of four. So I'm going to pause the video here and then we're going to look at what we've actually done. Okay, so I brought the code over into Paint so we can talk about it a minute. So Right here we have to declare the type, so we're, we're saying it's an integer array. If we wanted to hold doubles, we'd say we would have double right there, or strings, we'd say string right here. And remember that once we set the type, we can only hold that type of data in the array. So this is an integer array, it can only hold integers. And then we name it, so it's named A in this case, and then we use our keyword new, and you're used to that when we created objects. And then we're creating an integer array with four total positions, so we can store four total integers in this array. So there, the length of this array is equal to four, so we can hold four values. So essentially, to make it a little more concrete for you, we have made a data structure here that can hold four values. So the way I picture it is like this. It's a, this is a one-dimensional array. By the way, that's all we're talking about in this video. There are multi-dimensional arrays that are more complex, but for now, just one-dimensional array. So this is how it would look. So it has a an index of 0, 1, 2, and 3. Notice that your maximum index value is one less than your length. That's important, just like when you work with strings. That's similar in the way that it's set up. 
And because we didn't specify any values inside this array, it starts, and it's an integer array, therefore it starts with values of zero there. So in your mind, just to help make it a little more concrete, that's what we've done. We've created a data structure that has four positions that we can store integers in. All right, let's go back and work with some more code. Okay, we're back in our IDE here. So let's say that I wanted to access a value in this array. So the way I would do that, I'm going to print it out. So system.out.println, and my array is called A, so I always have to put the name of the array first, and then my array brackets. And then because I want to access index zero in this case, so the first position of the array, I need to put a zero inside my brackets there. And if I compile this and run it, it's going to tell us that that value is equal to zero. And it is because remember, when we looked at our image over here uh, because we didn't specify values when we first instantiated the array by default an integer array is loaded with zeros so that's why it's zero now let's say that we wanted to change those values so let's do that so let's actually load some specific values in the array so the way that we would do that is we would say a index zero is equal to, we'll just say 12, a index 1, so in position, uh, or index 1, we'll make that uh, 5, and a index 2 is equal to, uh, we'll make that 3, and then last position in the array is index 3, remember, because we, our length of our array is 4, we have to stay less than that because we're 0 index. So position 3 will put a 2 there. Index 3 will put a 2. So it's important to talk about the vocabulary here. So a, our array A index 0, so it has an index of 0. The value there, the element there is 12. At index of 1, the value, the element there is 5. So we have 12, 5, 3, and 2 now loaded into our array. So the default zeros are gone. So now one advantage of arrays is that we can easily process them and work with them using loops. So we're going to use a loop and actually sum up the values in this array. So we'll do that next. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is write a for loop. And we'll use a control loop control variable of i. And we'll start it at zero. That way we can start at index zero, the first position in the array. And this next part is important. And we want to say that i needs to say stay less than a dot length. And remember that my array is called a, and the dot length is going to return the length of the array, which is in this case four. And realize that I'm not using a method here. Notice it's not dot length with parentheses like this, because it's not actually a method. It's a state variable of the array. The length is a state variable. So we want to stay less than the length so we don't go out of bounds, just like when you worked with strings. You don't want to go out of bounds. Same thing with arrays. And then we'll do I++. So now what we're going to do is sum up all the values and i should have done this before but we'll move up here and we'll say int sum equals zero so we'll create uh, a, a variable an integer variable to store these values as we uh, move them up and we'll go ahead and put some brackets in here to hold this and we're going to say sum plus equals the value at position i or index i in the array. So in other words, when our i value starts at 0, we're accessing the value of 12. So a index 0 gives us a 12. And then when the i value goes to 1 here, a our array a at index 1 gives us a 5. And then when it's 2, it gives us a 3. When the index is 3, it gives us a 2. And then our loop is done because, remember, we're staying less than the length. So we'll get to 3 and then stop. Okay, so if we compile this, as long as I didn't create any syntax errors, which I didn't, then it's going to sum it up, so that would be 22. So we'll run that, and, well, I guess I should print it, right? So system.out.println, 
and we want to print sum. Okay, after our loop is done, should have done that before. So now let's run that. And it prints zero from this print print line up here, and then it prints the sum of 22. So this is an example of using a loop to work with this array. And this structure is very important. You start your loop control variable. Generally, you want to start with the first element in the array, so you'll start that at zero. And then you use this, um, your i, your loop control variable, needs to stay less than the length of your array. So it'll be array name dot length, and that will keep you safe and keep you in bounds working with your all right, okay, let's do uh, a couple of other things with this array, and then I actually will create some more arrays, and then we'll wrap the video up. Okay, so now let's make an array of strings. So I'm going to say string array s is equal to, now instead of saying new string array with a certain number of positions, I'm actually going to load values in this array from the very beginning. So I'm going to load Mr. in there need to put in quotes because it's a string so remember this is a string array so it can only hold strings and then separate each element by commas and then we'll put Howard in there and then one more statement that is an absolute fact and then close that off and now we have we have created a string array that's holding three different strings. Mr. Howard is awesome. All right, so we'll put a space in there so that shows up if we decide to print through this. Okay, so there, there we have another way. So remember up here in this section, we instantiated the array, made it hold, uh, able to hold four integers, and then we separately loaded those values. Well, here we created the array and when we were instantiating it we actually put in the values right away so automatically the length of this array would be what it would be three because we have three elements loaded and now this array string array s can only hold a maximum of three values so let's pause there and then we'll work with this okay so now let's say that i wanted to access these values so i'll have a system.out.println and I want to access S, array s at index 0, which should give me Mr. And then I'm going to actually comment out these other print line statements because I don't want those to show up. I'm going to copy and paste this, and we'll get the other two elements of this array to print. So that would be element at index 1 and the element at index 2. So now if I compile this and run it, then it's going to give me the first element at index 0, mister, and then the element at position uh, or index 1, which is Howard, and then the element at index 2, which is is awesome and then again this has a length of three and if we want to access that we can just say print line s dot length notice no parentheses because it's not a method it's a state variable of the array so I'll compile and run and then we get Mr. Howard is awesome and then the length of that array is three so one last thing I'm going to show you and we'll wrap this video up with the basics of arrays Okay, so now I'm going to use the Canvas tool within JGrasp to actually show you kind of like we looked at before with that drawing. You can see more in a more tangible way uh, what is actually happening. So I, you notice it just created our array, and you notice it just was instantiated, and it has the default values of 0. And as I'm clicking through, we just loaded 12 in index 0, we loaded 5 in index 1, we loaded the element 3 inside index 2, and then we just loaded a value of 2 in the index 3 of our array. And then we'll just step through here, we'll let this string array be created. We're looping through there, looping through, and there's our string array. And you see here that as soon as we made our array, that it went ahead and put these values in because that's the, the 
method that we use, the syntax that we use to create it, and then uh, that'll that'll be it. But this is uh, an additional way that you can use the uh, JGrasp uh, Canvas tool to actually see in a tangible way what this looks like. So you can view your arrays, you can watch the values change. So that is a very handy tool and one reason why I like to teach with JGrasp because it helps make this a little more tangible, a little more concrete for students to actually see what is happening. All right, one last thing that I wanted to cover that I forgot to cover. Let's say we wanted to change the element in one of these arrays. So let's let's just stick with our string array that we created. And let's say that I wanted to change uh, is awesome to is the best. So if I wanted to do that, I would just say that s array s at index that would be index two is now equal to the string is the best. And if I do that, and then I print out all of this again, so I'll comment that out. Actually, we'll just cut it. And we'll paste it right here. And then it'll print the length of the array, which is still three, and then it should say Mr. Howard is the best. So let's compile that and run it and now it says Mr. Howard is the best because I changed the value right here now if I comment that out and we run it again it'll be back to saying Mr. Howard is awesome so put it back in so I'm changing the value at the element at index 2 of this rate is the best run it again and it now is back to is the best. So that's how you change the value. Once you've created your array, you can change the value of any, uh, any element at a specific index with this setup right here. All right, that is it for this video. I will see you in the next one.